just look at that. I mean, if you don't want to eat this, there's no happiness for you on earth. Hey people, it's Mandy from Lady and Pups. Uh, I'm with Food 52 uh, today again to bring you another recipe from my cookbook, The Art of Escapism Cooking. The recipe we're gonna do today is on page 173. It's called Sichuan Hot Chicken. Here's a photo of it. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create the marinade. And I, you need to do this at least six hours before um, you're gonna fry the chicken because the chicken needs to be sitting in this marinade for at least six hours. And actually today, I'm going to let it sit overnight. So this is the day before, okay? So what you're gonna need, I, I recommend um, doing the marinade with an immersion blender with these like tall cups that usually comes together. Two large scallions. So I'm going to cut off the um, tip of the scallion. And then I'm just gonna cut it into small sections. And then one tablespoon of um, minced ginger or chopped ginger. I'm going to just eyeball this. Okay. Next, um, we need quarter cup of Sichuan raw bean chili paste. And that would be this. It's such an underrated ingredient because um, it doesn't just work in Sichuan cuisine, which is what it's known for, but it just adds um, a, a salty chili um, really nice fermented chili flavor to to whatever dishes that you want to add it to. Now a quarter cup of this and this is typically very very salty so this is gonna account for most of the saltiness. Oh sh Okay, four tablespoons then. Okay. For things like this I really really prefer using weight. It's just so much easier, but today I'm just gonna I'm gonna do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, so four tables, uh, a quarter cup is about four tablespoons. Next, I need a um, quarter cup of soy sauce as well. Soy sauce, soy sauce, soy sauce, and then one tablespoon light brown sugar because this is gonna be a, quite a very salty uh, marinade, so you need the sugar sweetness to kind of offset it, not making it not too harsh. Um, sake. And then two teaspoons of ground citron peppercorn. I mean, if you don't have it ground up already, you can use the whole one too, because this is gonna be blended anyways, okay? And then one teaspoon of white pepper. Half teaspoon of salt. That's not salt. So the extra salt, um, I think it helps the marinade to really penetrate the chicken. And then two tablespoons of water. This is just to help things get blended up properly. And then I'm gonna go all the way back here. If you can see me. Okay. So here you go. So now I have my chicken eight pieces of dark meat chicken and I'm just going to pour this over the chicken so just basically toss and turn until they are all drenched up all right so in the fridge this goes now the second thing that you should totally make beforehand, six hours at least, or the day before, is the um, 
ma. Wait, what do I call it? The mala hot paste. Okay, so that's basically the um, the paste that's go on top of the fried chicken. What you're gonna need is a spice grinder. So today I am using this um, two different types of Sichuan, chili flakes from Sichuan, and this one is is spicier, and this one is more for color and fragrance. Since I have a little bit of this left, I'm just gonna use all of it here. And quarter cup. In the spice grinder, it goes. So two tablespoons of Sichuan peppercorn. Two tablespoons. One tablespoon of ground white pepper. Teaspoons. And then one teaspoon of ground coriander. It's kind of a lot to ask people to go out there and buy whole spices. So that's the reason why I'm, you know, writing the recipe with ground. Half teaspoon of ground cumin. And then star anise. I need half. Half of a star anise would be four pots. One eighth teaspoon of ground cinnamon. This is kind of the consistency that you're looking for. I'm gonna transfer this into a bowl like this. Maybe I do I need do I need more bigger bowl? Okay. The reason why I'm switching it to a bigger bowl is because um, later on we're gonna pour pour hot oil into this. And it's gonna bubble up. I don't want it to have any overflowing incidents. That's going to make me cry. Okay. Now we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. One tablespoon of sesame oil. Half a tablespoon of soy sauce. And one teaspoon of honey. One teaspoon. Okay, that's about it. And one teaspoon of rice vinegar. Okay. Five cloves of grated garlic. Jesus. Okay. I use a microplane, microplane grater for this. Next step, I'm going to basically really heat up the oil before I pour it into the into the chili, the spice mixture. So I will need quarter cup of canola. So I will need um, 60 ml and then five tablespoons of butter. There you go, perfect. You know what? Second thought, I'm actually going to recommend using a nonstick pot for this because I am heating up butter. And as we all know, that butter browns, okay? And when butter browns, all those brown bits are gonna stick to the um, to the surface of the pot. So now I'm gonna heat this up on high heat for about three minutes. And I'm going to look for visual cues, okay? And that's basically when the butter starts to brown. Okay, so you can see that you, the, the sizzling has subsided and then the sides of the pot, you can see like brown bits forming. Okay, and then basically just pour this into the spice mixture and give it a stir. So that's all, that's all the preparation that you were supposed to do the day before or six hours prior. And then the next step, we're going to fry the chicken. So this is the next day. And what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna, um, remove any excess uh, marinade from the surface of the chicken and I'm going to place it in another tray here and the best way to do this is just with hands I just use my finger to like scrape off any excess marinade um, I mean you don't have to like go crazy here but I don't want like too much of that marinade because it's going to be too salty
and then you can throw this marinade away. You're not gonna need that anymore. Set this aside, and we're going to prepare the um, the crust. The first layer is basically buttermilk and eggs. And then the dry ingredient, here I have three different types of flour. I have all-purpose flour, potato starch, and rice flour. And in here, I'm going to add a tablespoon of baking powder. The air that's created by the baking powder sort of make, um, makes the little crust a little bit lighter. One tablespoon of white pepper and then one tablespoon of black pepper. And then I need two teaspoons of garlic powder and just quarter teaspoon of baking soda. So it's just to give it more leavening power. And finally, one teaspoon of sea salt. And I'm just going to mix this together until even. Have a sheet tray that it's, um, has a rack sitting on top. Put that on the side. And then all I'm gonna do is put the chicken in the buttermilk and then into the, um, the dry mixture, okay? And then into the flour it goes. I try not to get my hands too wet because then it's gonna just get, get really messy. And what I do is I kind of like press the flour into the, the chicken a little bit. And then I and then I dust off the excess. Okay? Like that. Last piece. Okay, that's it. And then clean up before you move on to the next part, okay? So the chicken the, um, has been resting here or hydrating here for about like five to 10 minutes. And you can see that like um, the crust is now much, much more hydrated than before. And this step is super, super important. If you want the crust to actually stick to the chicken instead of just falling into the oil. I don't typically use a thermometer when I'm cooking at home or frying things at home. Usually I do the uh, wooden chopstick test. Basically I stick a wooden chopstick into the oil and if it bubbles up like that enthusiastically around the chopstick, typically the oil is ready, okay? Okay, first piece in. Because I don't have those commercial fryer that is super, super deep and I'm unwilling to waste so much frying oil. So my oil is about just about like one and a half to two inches deep. So I'm gonna let the, you see that I'm hang, I'm suspending the piece of chicken kind of in mid oil just to get it to solidify first before I drop it entirely into the oil. And then here, the last two pieces of thighs, it's still frying. And once these are done, we are ready to basically um, drench it in hot paste. Okay, so it's really important that you um, reheat your hot paste because of the butter. And you know, you want it to be still, you want to loosen it up. Otherwise it's hard to get it onto the chicken. And before you do this, um, before you apply it, add um, the herbs. And it's whatever you have. So here I have some scallion and a little bit of mint. So you're gonna basically dunk this already fried chicken into this spicy, spiced up butter grease. Yep, okay. So here we go. Um, if you like, I don't try not to like drench it completely, but usually what I do is I have a little, you know, brush here and then I try to, you know, apply the hot sauce onto the chicken like that. So this is the final product. Super, super crispy, savory, spicy, 
fried chicken drenched in even more spicy, oily butter mixture. Okay, I'm going in. Napkin ready. I'm going in thigh first, because that's my favorite part. Mm. What's there to say? Super savory. <laughs> These crazy dogs that I have. <laughs> Super savory. The marinade has completely penetrated into the chicken thighs. Because I did a 24 hour um, marinade, you can do it six, that's fine. And then the spice mixture, it's not just spicy, even though it looks so deadly. And I know that you look at this thing, you're like, you know, a crazy person will eat that. But it's not really about the spice, um, the heat level. Like a lot of Sichuan cuisine is really about a balance of combination like fragrance and a little bit of heat, but mainly like the fragrance of the pepper and the numbingness of the Sichuan peppercorn really, really comes out. But it's not gonna, it's not enough to make you uncomfortable. Sometimes like there are dishes with so much Sichuan peppercorn that like, you feel like your whole face is numb. This is, it hits just the right point. This is definitely something that you will remember eating, okay? So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.